Welcome back, anti-MLMers, or maybe even you pro-MLM guys who are thinking about jumping ship. Welcome to the Sounds Like MLM But OK podcast, the only podcast on the internet dedicated to the predatory nature of multi-level marketing, aka pyramid schemes, because the FTC doesn't draw a very fine line between the two, but they certainly did for this MLM. I'm your co-host, Sasha, and with me today, as always, is my beautiful, talented consumer advocate, Katie. So, Katie, we're going to be talking about some music today. You like music, yeah. right? I love music. What, what kind of music do you like? Actually, I've gone through a lot of different genres in my lifetime, but currently... I feel like maybe last... you may have been a Panic at the Disco kind of girl like 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't say I don't still listen to them occasionally last 10 or so years it's mostly alternative alternative rock classic rock no yeah as you mature you tend to find <laughs> okay, like like one of my favorite um because i inherited uh, as many of you know from my dumb analog video i've got a lot of vinyls my favorite vinyl was one that i inherited from my mom and it was van morris's first album and i just listened to the first track like over and over and over again and i'm like yeah that's the shit that's what I'm all about. I think it's called, like, You Stoned Me? I don't know. I don't even know what it's hmm. called. I just listen to it over and over again. But as for me, I seem to like, well, right now especially, I like Chromio a lot, especially their latest album, Head Over Heels. If you don't know Chromio, they used to do kind of like a 1980s vibe in the mid-2000s when that was like a really popular thing. But now their sound has really matured and now it is like tight as a fuck like i am so into it if you have spotify definitely check it out deep in my soul i really like girl garage bands from the 60s and i really like girl garage bands and other uh from other countries as well that seem to cover american songs so i spent a lot of time in used vinyl shops trying to find these records i really like that phil specter soul sound too and then as many of you know i love afro man I, I just, I adore Afro Man. And although he did a great job on stage at the venue that I saw him at, the people booking him did some really fucked up things and only allowed him to play for a few minutes. Without naming this kid, can I play part of Afro Man's opening act, Katie? It's really bad. There were nine opening acts before Afro Man was allowed on stage at 1030. And most of you know, the show ends at 11. So I think I've shared this one with you. It was the really, really bad act. Yeah. Yeah. I won't yeah. share his name. He's young. He's from a rich part of California. He's white and it's terrible. So <laughs> here it is. Anyway, today we are going to talk about a music MLM that ended up being a legit pyramid scheme according to the FTC. It was bad news, especially for people trying to get discovered in the industry. Also, a lot of fake money exchanged hands. This is one of the worst ones I've researched, and I think y'all will enjoy it in kind of one of those, like, hate-enjoy kind of ways. Um, it's pretty bad. It's it's really, really bad. <laughs> I really enjoy doing these failed MLMs. Y you know what I mean? Because there's something really satisfying about seeing an MLM go down, because they all should. So that's why you always hear me doing stuff like Man Cave or Boner Coffee or, you know, y you know, Katie, I'm always the one that kind of go out and find, like, the ones that don't exist anymore. Um, now, usually I use archive.org or which is also, you know, the way back machine to delve into these MLMs that seem to have, dare I say, crashed and burned. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think Burn Lounge must have been designed entirely on Adobe Flash or whatever <laughs> they were using in 2005 because I can't get any, and I mean any thing to pull up from archive.org. It's just like a black screen. When then it asks me, like, do I want to enable Adobe Flash Player? And then I'm like, yes. And then 0% of it pops up. There's there's nothing on, on there for me to look. Everything I had to find about Burn Lounge was just through articles and YouTube videos. 
And the YouTube videos are hmm, fun. Well, most of them are kind of fun. They remind me of Man Cave, honestly. There's like a lot of explosions. It seems to be very male centric. Yeah. Th- there is one that's not. I'll get. To, I'll get to the nine minute video, and I, I promise I will not play you any clips from the nine minute <laughs> video. It's a PowerPoint that's nine minutes long, and is just so boring to get through. Most of the videos are ridiculous, but this nine minute one is absolutely terrible. So Katie, are you ready to get into it? You ready to talk about Burn Lounge, which I feel like is a terrible name. I mean, there is a nightclub down south called Burn Lounge. I feel like that makes sense, calling a nightclub Burn Lounge. But calling a uh, multi-level marketing company Burn Lounge, you're setting yourself up for failure. Usually MLM company owners are not very good at naming companies. Not a good track record, but I am ready to feel the burn. Let's let's feel the burn of Burn Lounge. So we will be right back after this little musical interlude and we will talk about that burn. So put on some burn cream and get ready for us. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. All right, well, let's talk about what is Burn Lounge. Katie, if you heard the word Burn Lounge, what would you immediately think as as a business venture? A Burn Lounge. Okay, my... <laughs> this is so dumb. My very first, like, the first thing that popped into my head was I imagined a smoking lounge. Like oh, a like hookah. Lounge, hookah. But, but with workout equipment like weights <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i feel like it's one of those things in colorado that you would go to where you would get high before you work out and then like everybody is high as shit and working out yeah but but i'm not imagining it looking like a gym i'm imagining it looking like a classy cigar lounge weight machines bow flexes and shit Okay, if it's, like, a classy cigar lounge, (laughs) are there, like, women hanging around, like, coming and bringing you, like, I guess not cocktails, because this would be some kind of, like, workout lounge. No, 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 no. But it would be, like, power smoothies with with camel milk powder in them. Crystal glasses. Right, of course. With, like, steel rings around them. And I'm picturing it as a very dark location. You know how gyms have, like, a lot of natural light? This would be very, like, wood. Dark brown and black low lighting smoky atmosphere yeah exactly while while you're working out that sounds there's like leather chairs thing around but there's also like weightlifting equipment <laughs> so you could do whatever when you're there at the burn lounge okay but let's yeah, talk chill. yeah Let, let's talk about what the burn lounge actually was the idea with burn lounge was that everyone was switching to internet media to get their goods instead of torrenting right like that's pretty cool I, right. y- y- yeah, it's pretty cool that that people were like going to Netflix, going to iTunes, because now you didn't have to buy a full CD just to get the one track you wanted. You could buy the one track you wanted. So, right. yes, this was one of the pioneers of multi-level marketing in the as as part of the Internet, which started around 2005. That was my freshman year of college. So I have no memory of any of this. Uh, it was started by CEO Alex Arnold, who was part of a Ponzi scheme in the past, which was called Journey Telecom. I could not find a whole lot about it because now I think that there is another business out there called Journey Telecom. He apparently saw that the traditional retail sales were going bankrupt, although I think he thought that because maybe his last MLM was a scam and he lost a lot of money that way. There was, quote, no platform for the independent artist. And it's like, uh, hello, MySpace and YouTube were a thing by then. Yeah, that's not, that's not true at all. It's not true at all. And that's why it's ridiculous. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. So continuing on about why this piece of shit existed. (laughs) It's bad, you guys. (laughs) The idea was to essentially start your own franchised iTunes store. It it was basically a digital version of Amway, which it essentially was when you get into all the products and all the ways you have to move up in the company. Uh, Did you see any of of the stuff that they were offering? 
Um, Any of the physical merchandise? No. Okay, well, we will talk about that. Burn Lounge offered to set consumers up with an online store where they could sell music and related merchandise. For an annual fee, Burn Lounge would provide both the website and the license to sell music. Fees ranged between $30 a month all the way up to $430 a month. I feel like even $30 a month is like a lot. No, it's it's a lot. We'll get into like the compensation plans of how you can become a business owner in this weird iTunes Amway scam. <laughs> the multi-level marketing company compensated its retailers for recruiting new re- retailers and selling digital music packages for selling merchandise on their site. They would earn points like fun bucks, itchy and scratchy money, Disney dollars, stuff like that. Not real money. They could use those points to buy more merchandise. Retailers could have their points converted to cash for an extra monthly fee, aka they would have to buy their way up to a higher status. You have to pay them to give you your money. Yes, exactly. Which is something I noticed. Again, maybe we'll talk about this later when we go through the steps of what of who you are in the company because it's a little bit different than going from like oh i'm white status oh i'm yellow status oh i'm pink status etc cetera, etc cetera. it's 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 a lot different than that yeah the company site allowed customers to preview and purchase music and chat through a proprietary client which was basically like aim for this website Customers wishing to sell music through their own custom pages were required to purchase a subscription. Subscription costs varied and consisted of either an annual fee or an annual fee with an additional monthly charge. These fees only allowed to redeem sales points for Burn Lounge products. Participants paid additional fees if they wish to exchange earned sales points for money. A Fortune article places the commission, this is terrible, a Fortune article that I read places the commission at five cents per 99 cent download. Ah, that's so bad. I feel like the uh, selling point here to try to recruit people into it, since you can basically only earn money to spend in the Burn Lounge store, a selling point would be like, oh, I don't have to buy music anymore because I'm a burn lounge rep and I get my music for free because then you, whatever you do earn, you just turn around and use it to buy music. Yeah. But they always, they talk about in the video, how you can be your own customer, which, which is something that we've talked about multi-level marketing before, but they come right out and say it. Like if you're, if you sign up for free, you are your own customer. Yeah. So it's all kind of fucked up in that way. Like there is no secret about what they're trying to do, especially with these fun bucks. Uh, I read this really, really funny quote from Wired that I'm stealing from it. If your reaction to Burn Lounge was anything like mine, you quickly became frustrated by chirpy, overenthusiastic strangers infiltrating your favorite spots on the internet to hammer you with links to lame bands, subverting the normal friend-to-friend recommendation experience. And, hey, this sounds like SoundCloud rappers to me. Um, (laughs) Right? Like, like, it's like, hey, hey, dude, check out my, my, my SoundCloud. Yeah. Uh, I did see a video of a burn lounge convention, which I'm not going to share here because it made me really, really depressed, where one young woman thought it was going to give her the exposure she needed. And she was 14 years old as a rep. Man. And she's like, oh, me and my dad think that this is perfect. This is going to get me out there. Blah, 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 blah. Use MySpace. Tila Tequila got popular off of MySpace. I mean, I know that she's like nuts now, but she at least she got popular. She got her own shows on MTV. Jeffree Star, still very popular. And uh, Panic at the Disco. Like MySpace was a perfect prime place for people to be discovered. Also YouTube. Justin Bieber got discovered on YouTube through Usher. Hmm. Interesting. So in one of the videos, I saw that they had apparently... I, I don't know how accurate these videos are because, you know, when, when, when they're promotional videos, it's like, is this really true? But apparently they had all these deals with all these record labels. I wonder if they ever got those top 40 artists to, to actually be on the site. Yeah, I'm really curious about who what music was actually available through Burn Lounge. 
Well, especially like, were you able to actually find your favorite bands like it advertises or is it all like Walmart brand music? That's 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 what I was wondering. I was wondering, especially people trying to get themselves out there. I feel like that this is more of a platform for people trying to show themselves what they could do. And they thought that if they paid the four hundred and thirty dollars, you know, music mogul fee, that they would be able to get their music out there and they would be able to become a star because they would have that that influence in the industry, you know, be be discovered more easily. I yeah. mean, shit, even Rebecca Black was discovered on YouTube. <laughs> and I know, I think her video, like, this is my personal opinion. I think her video was personally bad. Like, it, it was intentionally bad for her to be discovered. And when you actually hear her sing, she sounds beautiful. I haven't actually so, listened to her. No, she's she has a very, very beautiful voice. And now she's got, well, I don't know what kind of career she has, but at least on YouTube, she's got a following. I'm sure she's getting some money from YouTube. Um, like I said, I don't know what how exactly these top 40 artists, I don't know what the licensing requirement, how, how that works. I don't know anything about the music industry. I know I have had to buy commercial licenses for the show to, you know, cover our ass. Or I occasionally play Vaporwave, like a couple episodes ago, where I played Floral Shop, because Katie mentioned that she worked in a floral shop, because there's like a nice legal gray area there. But for uh, our After Dark episode, I really, really, really wanted to make the intro theme to Debbie Does Dallas, because it's a really, well, it's actually a pornographic movie in public domain. And what's interesting is the reason why it's in por it's, excuse me, the reason why it's in public domain is the producers didn't get their legal paperwork together in time. That is a true story. So I was like, okay, we'll do uh, Debbie Does Dallas. It has like the coolest beat. It was sampled in an Avenue D song back in the mid 2000s. And I've always loved it. But... I found out through research that just because a movie is in public domain doesn't mean the soundtrack is. So it's like, okay, how much could the Debbie Does Dallas theme really be worth? It's it's a pornographic song. And let's just say it was way beyond our budget versus anything we have ever paid for this podcast. Anyway, um... It was described as Netflix meets iTunes meets eBay meets MySpace, which seems very, very, very strange to me. I think this is because at one point they were going to offer movies on the website, but the eBay part kind of weirds me out because it's like, were we supposed to be bartering for music? Like if I saw a Justin Timberlake song, which back in that time, Sexy Back was a very, very popular song. I see it for 99 cents on Burn Lounge. Do I go up to the rep and say, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to pay uh, uh, 50 cents for this song. And that, 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 that that's my highest bid. Yeah, I don't really know. I, I feel like maybe they meant eBay because you're able to sell things maybe they just meant from like the selling stuff yourself standpoint. i guess so i guess that that's that's what they meant but wasn't very clear to me because i just think of ebay as like a bartering system where it's like best offer yeah so i think that they were talking about it was like myspace so that you could connect to other people just like you could on myspace if you were musicians or you were models that part makes sense to me uh, iTunes obviously makes sense because you're downloading um, music from artists you may have never heard of before. Now, the Netflix part is pretty interesting because I think at one point they were going to offer movies on the website, but I imagine they would have been public domain films like It's a Wonderful Life. Stuff right. like that. Debbie Does Dallas. No, they wouldn't have offered Debbie Does Dallas. Or Stuff You'd See on Midnight Pulp, which is a free streaming service. Uh, are you familiar with Midnight Pulp at all, Katie? Mm -mm. No. Okay. Well, it's it's really kind of cool. Um, I will link it in the show notes if this is your thing, which for me it is. I love cheesy horror. I don't really like regular horror, but I just love cheese. Cheesy gore or cheesy horror, doesn't matter. And there are some great movies out there. It's free. You can watch it from your phone or you can watch it from your Roku or smart TV or whatever. The only problem with it being free is that there are a few commercials. Regardless, I feel like those are the type of movies you'd see on Burn Lounge. <laughs> These like weird like right. 1950s, 1970s stuff people don't care about 
getting streamed for a little cost or you would see a lot of christian movies Mm, yeah left behind series exactly yes 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 exactly exactly so how it worked i ended up watching nine minutes of video for project it was a powerpoint and it was awful and i hated it but it was the only video i could find that really broke down the compensation plan and i think it took like 30 minutes for you to get through it (laughs) It took longer than that, honestly, because I was checking Twitter. I was checking everything else. It was, it was, it was awful. I am not even going to link any of the sound bites. Poor guy needed a pop filter because all of his peas were like, pa, pa, pa. <laughs> and so, that. yeah, I know. In this nine minute video, he compares YouTube and MySpace. He says, they don't actually sell a product. Their revenues are generated from advertisers' fees. Why? Communities of people are valuable. Now, if this doesn't like, now if this doesn't sound like a pyramid scheme, I don't know really what <laughs> does. Yeah. Quote: Some people will be their own customers. Again, if this doesn't sound like a pyramid scheme, I don't know what does. But now you've become a part of a two hundred billion dollar industry, and he's talking about like MySpace and Netflix and iTunes and all these streaming services now, where people don't have to torrent to go find their 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 media anymore. International expansion is inevitable. Music is a universal language. Well, yes, I. <laughs> I mean, like I said, I, I, I agree to that to a certain degree because earlier I said I like I, I like 1960s garage bands that cover um, American songs, especially girl garage bands. So I get that. But this is a little smarmy for me. <laughs> I just don't even I just don't even know how to respond to that. International expansion is inevitable. It's going to happen. We know we're it's I just yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to respond to that. I don't know what to say or think. Well, I noticed <laughs> I noticed in the graphic that they showed on the PowerPoint. I, I guess I may as well link the, the nine minute PowerPoint if you really, really want to sit through it. <laughs> I don't like really rec- <laughs> <laughs> I don't really recommend it, but if you want to sit through it to see the whole thing. They have the international expansion, you know, it's like in North America, you know, like Mexico, uh, South America, every country except for Africa. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Jesus. Does it even go to like Europe or is it just... No, it goes to Europe. North and South America. No, no, no. That would would be really fucking hilarious. It it goes to Europe, just everywhere except Africa, because apparently Africa is not part of this uh, international expansion and... um, and music, you know, is the language of all people. I just... <laughs> International expansion is inevitable. Music as a universal language is not really a good way to make a point that you're definitely going to expand. Music is Absolutely a universal not. language. Okay, that doesn't mean that, like, your website <laughs> is going to be good enough to <laughs> expand that much just because people all over the world like music it's just so like presumptuous this whole thing is kind of presumptuous and that's why it was a pyramid scheme (laughs) so what i have in the next point uh is some people will be their own customers which i think i mentioned earlier in the podcast episode but uh some people will be their own customers and that is something that we know about every mlm and they just come right out and say it (laughs) They're like, yeah, it's going to happen. Deal with it. But that's if you sign up for the free membership. Oh, yeah. Because there are tiers. Like I said, the tiers are a lot different than doing like a normal MLM where you actually get promoted. You pay to promote yourself. This this company is just like shameless. Like they don't give a shit. They're like, yeah, it's an MLM. Yeah, you're going to be your own customer. Yeah, you're going to pay to be promoted. You're going to pay us to pay you. (laughs) Like... They don't give a shit. The other thing is now you've become part of that $200 billion industry. Yeah, they make you feel like (laughs) you're something important. Hey, you're part of this industry. You're part of the music industry. Like, you're not a fucking producer, friend. You're selling music online. Somebody else's music. Yeah, no, you're... and, And who knows what music you're selling? Like, I saw something like Hootie and the Blowfish... You know, are promoting this Justin Timberlake. What what kind of music? (laughs) They say they've got 200 million songs, which sounds like a lot. But when you go to Spotify, 
and you want to look something up, I believe that there are way more than 200 million songs. I don't know. I'm talking out of my ass right now. But 200 <laughs> million songs does not sound like a whole lot of music to me. I mean, that's a lot of space that you can make up with like alternate versions and covers and EPs and multiples of the same song. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, to be your own customer, it's free. Business owners costs $30 to $430, which we will get into that a little further. What this PowerPoint says is the more you pay, the better your reputation on the line with celebrity endorsements and industry p- prestige and connection goes. So you pay more, you're going to get the black card, which gives you VIP status, which sounds a whole lot about the Fire Festival 2017, which we've <laughs> talked about in earlier episodes. God, why can't I think of his name? But the first thing he did before Fire Festival was start this like VIP club with like this fake black card where you could like hang out with Jerul. Oh, that's funny. How come Jerul did not get a part of this? <laughs> yeah, this seems up his alley. This is this is up Jarul's alley. Today it's music, tomorrow it's movies, ringtones, etc. And then he ends his video with saying, God bless. MLM ringtones. Well, do you remember, like, just, yeah, do you remember getting, like, cool ringtones back in the day? Like, like back when you had to actually buy ringtones? Or you could make you them yourself on your phone if you were, you know, musically inclined. Yeah, MLM ringtones. Like, that's just <laughs> not something I ever thought would be so you'd get, a thing. You'd get the, sh- the, 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 the sh- probably the shitty music. You'd get the shitty public domain movies plus the weird Midnight Pulp movie. I'm sorry, I love Midnight Pulp, but you'd get those weird Midnight Pulp movies. And who Threat knows? Level what... Midnight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the stuff you'd kind of see like on uh, Elvira. <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, th- that's what you would see. And you would get God knows what ringtones, like Holla Back Girl. <laughs> I remember when that was a very popular ringtone. <laughs> oh shit. Or like, do you remember back in the day? when you could call somebody. I don't know if this still exists because I am... Ring, are you talking about ringback tones? Yes, I am. Do those <laughs> still exist? I, I don't know. I think maybe... I think that I called someone like a year ago and they had a ringback tone and I was so thrown by it and I was just like, what the fuck? This is still a thing? I didn't know you could still do this. Yes, you know, I remember that. when that, Kate, was, that was like the coolest shit ever. Katie, you are a professional woman. You are a professional consumer advocate. I think that you should make a ringback tone of (laughs) something like, I don't know, some kind of like punk anti-capitalist song. (laughs) That's like, that's like, like, fuck MLMs. I have no idea. Like, it's, 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 we'll we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Somebody that is good at music, musically inclined, I need a anti-MLM rock anthem to set as my phone ringtone. You know, the harder the better. Tweet at her at MLM Riot, or you can go to our our email, which is podcast at S-L-M-L-M, but okay, and just say, Katie, I've got this really tight ring back for you that you can use now i and can't guarantee that i'll use it as a ring back but i i i will consider using it for my ring tone and okay. then we can have sasha call me while we're recording next time and everyone can hear it <laughs> no that's <laughs> tight i like that a lot that's what's up <laughs> let's do that okay now we're gonna watch video from the promo i've broken it up into a few sections let's listen to the first section Anyone can join Burn Lounge, the world's first fan-driven digital download community. There are three ways to join Burn Lounge. Member. Becoming a member is free. As a member, you get your own customizable Burn page where you can connect with anyone in the Burn Lounge community. You can download the free BL2 software where you can browse stores and use the library to organize and play your own music. Members can buy music from a Burn Lounge store by adding a credit card or Money to Burn gift card or certificate. Customer. Anyone can become a customer of your Burn Lounge by downloading BL2 from your Burn page. My first impression after like a minute of watching was this looks like it was marketed to eighth graders in like 2007 it did remind me of myspace 
and there's a lot of explosions and very catchy graphics and things just like, like that. Just like Man Cave. It, it literally looks like it was marketed to eighth grade boys. I, I can't imagine anybody else who would have seen that and would have been like, oh, wow, this is super badass. It really just looks like it would be really rad to eighth grade boys. Well, yeah, it would because it would it would be rad to eighth grade boys. It but, would be rad to eighth grade but boys. But th- this was definitely, regardless of eighth grade boys, this was definitely targeted toward men and not women. They, yeah. They did not try to do any kind of female marketing at all for this product. There's a lot of explosions for a video about music. It's kind of weird. Consider one of our paid packages. Burn Lounge paid packages let you build full teams of stores, earning on up to six rings of stores around you through our concentric retail program. With the Burn Lounge basic package, you can upgrade to the full version of our ICE software, which lets you edit every store page and gives you even more space to feature products. The basic package gives you a full set of tools to build a great download store. You also get a copy of Burn Lounge magazine, which keeps you up to date on the latest trends in entertainment and technology. You can set up basically your own profile. Correct. And pick and choose what music you want to advertise or display. Correct. And your friends have the option to come to your profile and purchase music from there. Purchase your favorite music. So, like I so said, so my yeah. space. It was well, but see, here's the thing. Like I said, I really like Chromio. Let's say I had a because um, you know I could put your own song up on MySpace when people came to your profile. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> like... But like nobody could purchase that. It was just my song that was up on my profile. Right, but I mean, you could still provide a link a way to download or find that music in order to obtain it for yourself. But no one did that. I feel like they do now. No, they do now. Like, for example, for uh, our intro and outro music and some of our interlude music who we get from uh, Ryan Little, who is just, I can't believe how talented he is. We definitely always give him credit and we're like, here, please go to his SoundCloud. He's incredible. But I feel like back in 2004, 2005, people were not doing that. Yeah. Well, either way, still sounds a lot like MySpace. Sounds a lot like MySpace. Okay. The Burn Lounge exclusive package is for people who want to turn their store into an exclusive destination. The exclusive package gives you a full subscription to Burn Lounge magazine and adds the power of Burn Lounge Presents. BLP gives you 120 songs handpicked by our A&R staff, plus exclusive performances from today's hottest bands, keeping you tied in to the latest new artists and music. So you know that that magazine is going to be really shitty. Like, I feel like it's going to be written by interns that really wanted to work for Vice but got rejected. <laughs> Probably. I mean, I can't imagine how that, that, that print magazine would be doing anybody any good. No, I'm sure it's really shitty. But that's what they offered. Now, I don't understand. Was that just offered to the representatives or was that something that you could offer to your clientele? Hmm. That's a good question. Because they don't make that but very I like clear. How, I do like how he mentions you can earn burn points or whatever the fuck they're called, but kind of glazes over the fact that you can't actually earn any money, and in order to use that as money, you have to pay them more money. Yeah, like I've said in previous episodes, it's Disney dollars or itchy and scratchy money or fun bucks, whatever you want to call it. You get points so that you can buy more music for your your iTunes franchise shop. Yeah. So it's, it's like I said, I don't see how this could not be a pyramid scheme at all. <laughs> I mean, you literally can't spend the money you earn outside of the company. Well, it depends how much you pay. Let's keep going. The Burn Lounge VIP package can make you an industry player. The VIP package gives you all the benefits of the exclusive package, plus Burn Lounge University, our music business education program, and Event Pass, which gets you VIP treatment at concerts and events across the country. With Event Pass, you get treated like other entertainment industry VIPs. Jump to the front of the line, get exclusive tickets, hang out in the VIP lounge, and more. The background music is just so intense. 
it's super intense and these this, these exclusive music offers that they're 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 offering i feel like are going to be very very shitty bands i feel like there's either a car chase or a parkour chase going on with that music a parkour chase <laughs> i'm imagining people running across rooftops <laughs> parkour <laughs> like shit what was that movie called like crouching tiger hidden dragon <laughs> The, the music is just so intense that's what it makes me think of anyway it, it's intense it's intense okay i feel like maybe he could have used the word exclusive a little bit more well and also this is the part that reminds me of amway where you can go to these universities and learn more about how the 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 music industry works <laughs> you'll be treated like other big names in the industry going back to that black card you know it's very founder of fire festival <laughs> you know again ja rule should have been involved and he should have uh, he should have he should have been involved and i don't see how this card like if i went to an exclusive club and i showed this like in the card of, co of course is black it's black of course and if i went and i showed this card and if in course in the video they're showing like a lot of like really sexy ladies behind beaded curtains just want to put that out there <laughs> i go and i show this card and i'm like hey you know i'm i'm part of the industry do you think anybody would actually let me in uh they would laugh in your face exactly they would laugh in my fucking face so all right here is the end of the video where we talk about how you can actually use your your fun points your fun money your burn points, whatever you burn, want to call it. Burn bucks. Burn That's bucks. It. Use the burn bucks. This is how you make it into real money. And this is where you have to pay the $430 fee. Ready to turn your burn lounge into a real business? Paid retailers can add the mogul program. Burn lounge moguls get BMS, powerful business management software that lets you track your team and manage your earnings. Burn lounge moguls earn extra bonuses for building teams. But best of all, moguls can turn their burn rewards points into cash. Join now. Just visit your favorite retailer's burn page and click download to try BL2. Or click sign up to register right away. Burn Lounge. Download stores of, by, and for the people. Now, I almost feel like I should continue to play the rest of the video because there is just 10 seconds of a black screen. <laughs> the last 10 seconds are black. Perfect. I know, isn't it? It, it? Just perfect video editing. Between you got your sexy women, your explosions, your this is how you're going to make a bunch of money. But so anyway, I know I'm kind of repeating myself here. This is a whole lot different than promoting yourself through a company where you're going from... One diamond, two diamond, triple diamond, crown, wh whatever the fuck you want to call it. You, you're actually paying to make yourself higher in the company. Have you ever seen that in an MLM before? I feel like I have. I just can't think of it off the top of my head right now. Usually it's like disguised as something else, though. They, they make it seem like you're not actually paying to advance. You're paying right. for something else, but in reality, you're paying to advance. Well, shit. But yeah, that's how this worked. So you could either do it for free and technically make no money, or you could pay $430 and still technically make no money. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's essentially what uh, this was all about. What the fuck happened? What, what happened here? Doesn't this sound like a brilliant business model? I think Katie and I think it sounds brilliant. It's all about, you know, getting those public domain movies. And it's all about getting those shitty musical artists. And maybe Justin Timberlake and uh, Timbaland. Timbaland, best producer of all time, by the way. Fucking great. It, it definitely seems like a winner, no-lose situation. No, I don't see what how it could go wrong. Especially once you pay the $430 to get to Mogul and you can trade your fun bucks in to make real money after this little musical interlude we will be right back we will talk about exactly what happened with the ftc and all the problems and why this company doesn't exist anymore so hang tight <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, so what exactly did happen to, I keep wanting to call it burn notice, but you know, burn lounge. (laughs) The Federal Trade Commission, as we all know as the FTC, filed a lawsuit on June 5th, 2007 against specific burn lounge participants for involvement in a pyramid scheme because it totally was a pyramid scheme. Uh. I know, right? The FTC claimed that Burn Lounge is a pyramid scheme because the company pays more money for recruiting new store owners than from selling music. Mm -hmm. Yep. The lawsuit claimed that Burn Lounge made very little money from the sale of music and made the vast majority of its money from independent associates named moguls. Paying, Paying them $430 a year plus fees for the right to sell music. The lawsuit also stated that associates were paid a cash reward for recruiting others into the program. Again, does sound like a pyramid scheme. I mean, you're not even supposed to do that. No, 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 you're not. And you of all people should know that. One person in the lawsuit, Rob DeBoyer, says he recruited about 45 people to open their first burn lounge sites. Those recruited would then pay a commission on their sales to DeBoer. DeBoer stated he made almost $300,000 in U.S. cash from Burn Lounge. The lawsuit is the result of a year-long investigation into Burn Lounge by the state of South Carolina. Others named in the lawsuit include former Burn Lounge CEO Alex Arnold, who we mentioned at the very beginning of this episode, and two Texas men who were who promoted Burn Lounge similarly to DeBoer. The case went before a federal judge in December 2008, and while many of the accusations against the company were dropped by the FTC because they were hoping that like Herbalife lawyers and shit w- w- would help them. On February 29th, 2012, ooh, leap year, an order was issued barring the defendants from operating a pyramid scheme and ordering the pay some $17 million in damages. That's a lot of cash. Wow. That yeah. is. In June 2014, the U.S. Court of Appeals unanimously upheld the ruling, declaring Burn Lounge to be an illegal pyramid scheme. That's a long time, because they started out in, like, 2004, 2005. That's, like, 10 years. Yeah. Burn Lounge was considering appeal to the Supreme Court. Multi-level marketing analysis described the ruling as being likely significant to an FTC investigation of Herbalife, Herbalife praised the ruling, saying it clarified that its own business model does not follow under the appellate court's definition of a pyramid scheme. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of funny, isn't it? I find that I find that humorous. Herbalife's like, yeah, good work. See, look at that. Yeah, I know. That's that's what's that's what's really really funny. We're good guys about it, or because we haven't also been sued for being a pyramid scheme because they have. They well, yeah, have. they have. They definitely have. And they will continue <laughs> to continue being sued for a pyramid scheme. Like, people are always coming after Herbalife. In June 2015, the FTC began mailing checks to consumers who had lost money in the pyramid scheme. The FTC was mailing 52,099 checks, totaling almost $1.9 million dollars. The company is dormant, pending additional appeals. As of July 2018, how recent is that? The company's website hosts a teaser promoting Burn Lounge 3.0 with the statement, Get Ready, which has remained unchanged over 10 years. (laughs) I could, like, I I mean, apparently so, but apparently my Google Google Foo skills aren't good enough to be able to find that. I, I do trust Wikipedia for that, but didn't see it. I did not see it. Get ready. Get ready for, you know, I mean, what else could there be? We've got iTunes. We've got, like, I use Spotify. That just reminds me, that just reminds me of that episode on The Office when Ryan comes back and he's like, okay, we're catching up with the times. We're creating a new website, blah, blah, blah. And it cuts to Jim at his desk and Jim's like, I don't, I don't see what's wrong with the old website. And it pans to his computer and it says like Dunder Mifflin like new website coming Christmas. I don't know, like 
<laughs> right, it was like right, 90, right, right, right. 1990 something or like it was like really old and had like a little stick figure and like a Santa hat or whatever like <laughs> where no. they they just never did it like it just says coming soon forever and they just left it like that do you remember those geocities websites that uh when people were working on them it would say like under construction and then there would be some <laughs> some gif of some worker like like you know like road worker yeah working yeah. And, and being like and you were like no nah, that 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 site is never that that page of the site is never gonna come that that's, that's what it's happening. like burn notice or whatever the fuck i'm gonna call it burn lounge dumpster fire dumpster fire is a good name for it because it's like a dumpster's kind of like a lounge and then you set it on fire <laughs> All right, so we'll take a very, very, very brief musical interlude for the people who, you know, don't necessarily like the musical interludes. I like to bump out, but, you know, we'll take a very, very brief one, and we will come back, share our final thoughts, and we will end this whole whatever you want to call it. It's a mess. Like, it's a huge rabbit hole to go down. We really just covered... What's the word I'm looking for, Katie? We we really just covered the, um, the surface... Uh the yeah. surface of this like you could you could find so much shit on this and it's nuts okay so we'll be right back Okay, so that about wraps it up for the episode. Katie, do you have anything you want to stick a button in? I really don't think so. <laughs> what is there to say? Like, this is such uh, a bullshit, yeah. pure, like, a very obvious pyramid scheme. There's not, there's not much to say, you know? Well, and it really bothered me watching, this is why I, I did not add this clip to the to the podcast because it disturbed me so much about the 14 year old girl who was on there trying to promote her music and it's like so many people probably got on there just to promote their their stuff because they thought that this would be you know if they spent 430 dollars and went to uh burn lounge university and got to know like what it was like to be inside the industry that they would become very very successful music artists It, it really hurts me this one yeah. is, is, I think, almost... I mean, our Amway episode was awful. Our LuLaRoe episodes are awful. This one is, like, funny, but it is awful because it is so obviously a pyramid scheme. Yeah. Well, okay, that wraps it up for this episode. Again, like I already have done, I would like to promote my Pearl Party parody, which had to be postponed because of tarot cards and my cat you know, who told me that it was going to be a bad idea to do it on August 5th. My Pearl Party parody will happen sometime at the end of the month. I'm thinking around the 24th or the 25th. And yes, there will be a couch auction, I promise you. Although we will have some other amazing prizes to give away. So if you do decide to buy pearls from us, non-MLM, I promise this is going to be a non-MLM, although it is satire on multi-level marketing. Uh, The profits will go to a Holocaust education center since I was named after a World War II uh, Holocaust hero. If you are interested in joining the page, it's facebook.com slash pearls gone wild parties. It's the one that only has, you know, like 14 people following it so so you'll, you'll you'll figure it out it's the one with the cover picture of the dolphins having an orgy you'll figure it out um and it, has, <laughs> and it has a picture of joe francis wearing a clam shirt so hell yeah like that shit and all your money will go to a good cause if you know anyone with a good holocaust education resource center that i could donate to please message me on twitter which i will include in the show notes you can find us everywhere you want us to be found we are all over social media we are exploding we're aren't we katie we're exploding totally exploding on social media exploding everywhere brains Uh, on the wall brains on the wall that is right uh, our Twitter and Instagram is at S-L-M-L-M, but okay, we are starting to do uh, live stories, which is really cool. So you should check those out. We'll do some behind the scenes stuff. Uh, so join the fun on that. 
Our YouTube is Sounds Like MLM But Okay. And our email is podcast at slmlmbutok.com. You can find us on all of your favorite podcast streaming services. If you don't have a podcast streaming service, like if you don't have one downloaded, you can definitely stream or download us from slmlmbutok.com. Download, stream. We're there, people. We are there. Um, (laughs) We're everywhere. (laughs) Again, would love to give a shout out to the Lie, Cheat, and Steal podcast who have become our Twitter buddies. If you're not listening to them, you should because there's nothing better than a podcast about listening to liars, cheaters, and bullshitters like ours is about. Hopefully next week, uh, Katie and I will do the Camel Life episode because, Katie, there yes. is a episode about camel products Yes, that can cure certain ailments. Many ailments. Many ailments. And Katie and I will drink. (laughs) We will drink camel milk in various forms. We'll see how that goes. And I have a sensitive stomach. So we might. We might also be trying some some camel milk soap, but we'll just have to see. Yeah, I'm getting into that. Uh, If I have to shit halfway through the recording, we'll just put in some nice bumper music. Yeah, and and like you said, we will be trying some soap. I think what's going to happen is I'll probably have Greg, my husband, bring the microphone into the bathroom. And I'll be like, damn, this soap is fucking nuts. Or whatever. Like, we'll figure it out. Because apparently you can get it at Trader Joe's. From our understanding, right? Yeah. Or at least yeah. you can get it on the Amazon. Yeah. Doesn't matter. But like I said, if, uh, we'll see how it goes. If I have to shit halfway through the recording, we'll put on some nice bumper music while I do it. Please rate, subscribe, tell your friends, have your friends tell their friends, you know, like a pyramid scheme style. You know, tell three <laughs> friends, have them tell three friends, have them tell three friends. Uh-huh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But, you know, really kind of do it. Oh, the only thing I do want to stick a pin in is is that ringtone i need that anti mlm oh no katie ringtone. katie needs that anti mlm ringtone uh like i said her username on twitter is at mlm riot please get at her follow her because she is a riot she is a great consumer advocate and she really really needs that ringtone if you're in the group you already know who she is because she is the lead admin who will help you i'm not sorry not help you she will be the person no who... i'm not gonna help you just hold, leave on, me hold on hold on hold on i'm gonna edit that out i'm editing that out <laughs> katie is the admin of the group who who does the decisions of who gets in the group or not if you answer the three questions honestly and you're not a jerk and you're not part of an mlm this might be edited out but katie if they're part of an mlm and they want to get out are they are they allowed in the group we can't allow any current sellers okay but... okay okay then, then never mind never mind yeah yeah okay all but that out. once there are other other places they can go if they're trying to get out you can recommend them to um the coalition website but once they do get out they can join the group or they can join the survivors group okay i think i actually will keep all that in just so that people know that there is a um there's a place for them to go yeah you guys are the best fans and we're planning on going live more often if we can figure out the uh logistics of everything like for (laughs) example yesterday i was drinking absinthe at a bar uh maybe not the best live life choice i've ever made but i think it was a good one join the group (laughs) Sounds like MLM, but okay. There are over 60,000 people in it, which means that there's a lot of opportunities to make friends. There's a lot of opportunities for discussion. There's just a lot of opportunities in general in a group that big. And you can all kind of, and like, like Katie was saying, there's the survivors group if you were in an MLM and you need some more support. So guys, anti-MLMers and people looking to get out of MLM, Always read the fine print and don't get scammed. And we will see you on Monday, my dudes. 